Oh, I'm Dan Rossiter. This is Sharon. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here at Double Nail Farm, Jefferson County, New York. So, Dan, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the farm and the evolution and kind of how you ended up uh, making the decision to go to robotics? That's a lot to get in one sentence, but, you know, I mean, I think everybody likes to know the history and the background a little bit, how you started and kind of the path to get me here. Well, we were uh, born and raised in Connecticut and uh, we moved up here probably 35 years ago yep. in partnership with Sharon's, Sharon's family and yep. uh, home farm from Connecticut. Yep. And, uh, and then, for a while we milked cows a mile down the road and then bought this place. For a few years we milked cows there in here. And then we uh, added a farm here, put all the milk cows here, and then have them over there. But the facilities are, some of the barns and the milk parlor are getting some age on, getting more and getting tired. Yeah, getting a little tired. And so we kind of wanted to do something. And uh, this was a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a little touring, mostly in Indiana, and, mm -hmm. and the people there that, that dealt with robots and with other systems all seemed to say that, that they thought the robots were the future. So. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give it a try. Yep. One thing that enters into it is, is the farm, when you think of replacing a parlor or something, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of a nightmare to think about. You know, you get the cows milked, you get the barns built, and they're full of cows and all that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this, this was kind of the easiest way to do that. Build up a new barn, half the cows here, and then from here, and then now we have the freedom to kind of do what we want over there. Knock down an old barn, and put up a new barn, and we can add, add on to the other barn here, and put some robots there, and run the milk into this into this milk house. So that's uh, kind of where we're at. So Dan, from the, the time that you, you know, really kind of made the decision to go and build a new facility and do robotics till the time you actually moved in, how long was that period? Well, we actually had it on our mind. We, we kind of graded this site mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and we put in a manure pit mm -hmm. and we had uh, brought in three phase power mm -hmm. Something like this in mind. Uh, yeah, for every year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Pushing that. Yeah. yeah. There was some months in there where nothing had happened. It was right. north of New York. Right. Not much happened from November to April, but it yeah. snow. <laughs> I'm Pete LaRusso. I work at Doubledale Farm. Um, I've worked here for 15 years full time. I'm the robot barn manager. Before that, I worked with the calves. Uh, assistant herd manager and I did a lot of the field work. Yeah, so Pete, um, you know, we got into this project and talking about robots. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys were thinking and why you wanted to make that change and then maybe a little bit of did you look at other brands and why you ended up with Laley? Um, we started looking at robots because we have a double or 12 parallel parlor and it was old and it was starting to get worn out so we had to look at some options. Um, we started looking at robots, uh, the efficiency and the, the gains and again cow comfort was probably our biggest thing. Um, we went and looked at several barn Laley barns. We did look at some De La Valve barns and um, out in western New York as well and uh, we, we liked the Laley, the free flow designs that Laley had. And that was kind of probably one of the bigger reasons we went that direction. Mm -hmm. Very good. So Pete, you're looking at the computer screen there and there's a lot of pretty little de dials on there. And, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do uh, as, a, as a herd manager on a daily basis with the software and what things do you think really matter and 
the things that you look at every day. Well, like just a quick over glance with all these little gauges here, you can get a pretty good overview of the entire barn as far as the milk production, the visits, the refusals, the failures, even our box time and our free time. Um, and then I, I can also go through and look at each individual group because we have four different groups and see how they're comparing to each other. Okay. Um, especially as the numbers grow, we're still trying, we're still new at this, so we're trying to figure that all out. Um, and then on a daily basis, I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at the health report. And then there's an utter health report as far as over for mastitis. And then another report I'm constantly checking is the failed milk needs to figure out why, who's failing and why they're failing. So Pete, this is a nice facility you have. Can you tell me a little bit about the layout and design and what you really like about it? What you might think you might want to change if you had to do all over again? Um, it's a six row barn with outside feed alleys. Um, we have the robot barn dead center of the barn. So the, those head to head stalls are a little bit wider. So we have a walkway that, so we can introduce, introduce the cows and get the chemicals to the room. That was just pretty nice. And having the robot room in the middle of the barn, it helps in the winter time as far as heating it, using the cows to keep the keep, keep the, the room keep the room warm. Okay, uh, we have an insulated barn, and then we have there's 96 fans, all variable speed, independently controlled. We have two little fans, so there's plenty of ventilation in this barn. Um, we wanted cow comfort in this barn, so with the idea of 60 cows per robot. 120 per group, we have four groups. We have 120 stalls, a stall per cow. There's over 100 headlocks in each group, so there's cow comfort with the biggest design of the barn. Yeah, it shows. The cows look very good and they're very comfortable. One of the other things we just talked about with manure, we were back and forth on alley scrapers. And then after looking at some other barns, we started talking with you about the collectors. We went with the collectors and we're really happy with those so far. I mean, the cows are just clean because the alleyways are always so clean. Yeah, I remember at startup, I was quite concerned about the collectors and starting them up at the same time as the robots. And I thought the cows would all pile to one end and it did not happen at all. They were very calm around the collectors, so we were quite pleased with that. In terms of labor and what it takes, you have eight robots and Give or take 400 cows in this barn, a little better than that probably. Yep, well, there's 420 cows in this barn. So um, how, how, how many people does it take to keep this thing running every day? In the morning, there's two people fetching. Uh, we each take two, two groups and it takes about an hour and a half each. And then the feeder's a separate person and then I mean, there's a little bit, I do a little maintenance as far as cleaning the, cleaning the milk, milking robots. Yeah. And then I take some time to clean the collectors, a little bit of upkeep on that, um, groom some stalls. And then in the afternoon, fetch the milkers come out of the parlor, because we're still running the parlor stump. But, so then there'll be three to four of us attending for an evening fetch, but it takes us about an hour if that. So it's pretty quick in the, as far as labor in and yeah. out of here. Yeah, that's pretty efficient for sure. Hey Pete, can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing on the screen here and what you can see in this robot screen? Well, right now what we're seeing, we see that the, who the cow is, how many lactation days, what lactation she is, and then it shows each individual quarter how much milk it's expecting, what it's expected to give here. And then I can click here and I can see her daily production, expected visits, it's actually taking a temperature of her milk every time. Um, I can see the connectivity of each individual quarter, and then it has a little bit of a um, lactation history as far as calving date, second dry up, and reproduction. And you can, so you can have a basic overview of the cow right here at the robot. And then from here, if I have a cow with a problem, I can prolong it, or I can take off each quarter individually. So oh, Pete, can you tell us a little bit about what happens on a daily and weekly basis in this room? Um, every day in the morning when I'm done doing my fetching, I go through each robot, I'll shut, I'll shut it down and go into today's actions. 
and I'll just rinse down the arm very thoroughly, open up the cuffs, rinse them all out, clean out my vents, uh, clean the lenses, and then I'll uh, disinfect the chlorine dioxide foamer, and I'll put it back into operation. And then in the afternoon during the cluster wash, we rinse down the arm again and uh, disinfect it again. And then as far as weekly maintenance, on Fridays I will go through and I will calibrate the cups, the offset of the cups, and uh, make, just make sure everything's as clean as can be. And uh, today we went through with the foamer, the Lely foamer, to scrub the arms. So how many hours a week do you think you tie up into just a daily maintenance robot, keeping them running kind of stuff? I would say it's or per day, uh, maybe an hour and a half per day as far as just cleaning and maintenance. It's, yeah. it's pretty simple. Yeah. And that's for eight robots. And that's for eight robots, yeah. yeah. Pretty good, yeah. And obviously the place looks beautiful, so you guys are doing it all the time. Yeah. So. Excellent, very good. Okay, Pete, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on in here? Um, here we have the weight jar. With cow milk, it's going to fill up in here and it holds that milk until she's done milking. And then it'll actually do a rinse cycle through these two extra hoses, rinse everything to the valves are clean before it then pumps down to the tank. Um, as it's pumping down, it's taking a sample with the MQCC2. And uh, there's a somatic cell count reader. Somatic cell count reader. And there's a reagent up in here that drips down and it's there's a sensor in there and it's reading that for uh, text somatic cell and it only does that once every three milkings unless it finds a high somatic cell and what's challenging it, it'll then start uh, tracking per milking until it's cleared up. Um, we have the main power panel here and then there's, there's the, the fescue valve for all the air valves. Or, yep, that's the gates and uh, the, the gates and valves, the, uh, all of that. Yep. Yeah, so these look like your circuit boards behind here, and that's all your communication is the control of the robot. How often do you have to monkey around in here? Uh, we have the reagent we have to fill weekly, uh, and then just uh, rinse it down around the valve, make sure there's no buildup. Um, but besides that, not too much. Okay, cool. Thanks.